God. It feels like a thousand years ago. We drafted Tim, Tony, Manu, fought adversity, made a name for ourselves, became champions. Realized that we loved you. We're not a team that likes surprises. Hopefully this can be the last one. The league has changed. None of us can go back. All we can do is our best. And sometimes the best we can do is to start over. Some say it's time to move on. Some will. But not us. Even if there's a small chance, we owe this to everyone who is not in this room to try. And we will. Whatever it takes. Whatever it takes. Whatever it takes. Whatever it takes. What is up, Countdown City, San Antonio, Saytown, Fiesta Town? What is going on? Thank you for joining us on another episode of Spurs Film Room Live. If you're tuning in on YouTube or Facebook, really appreciate you hanging out. Make sure to smash that like button. If you're watching this post live, go ahead and smash that like button. Drop a comment down below. Um, what is going on? Rowdy Nation, UTSA, Spurs Nation, Loop to Loop, River Walkers. What's going on? Everybody in Spurs Nation, I hope you're doing well this morning. Um, if you like Spurs basketball, guys, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Check out some of the videos that and content that I'm dropping there on the regular. If you want to get your question answered on this show, guess what, guys? We do take questions on this show. If, we want, if you want to get your voice heard and chat Spurs basketball here live on this channel, there's a link in the description below that streamelements.com backslash a bucking spurs podcast backslash tip. And then also when you drop that tip, you don't just support this channel, but you all support the baby fund, the pamper fund, right? You contribute to a little spurs fan of your own. That's my boy. And everything we do on this channel is kind of geared up towards, you know, just, you know, providing a little bit more for, for little guy, little man there guys on this episode. We have a good one coming up here, but before we get into it, I just want to remind you guys to follow us on Instagram, very live on Instagram, um, doing a lot with my Instagram stories and whatnot. So it's good to hang out with you guys. It's good to be here. I'm going to be going up in the chat a little bit here and there as we move forward. All right. So guys, today is going to be all about what the title says, right? There's two things that 
happened yesterday that I want to talk about. One, Keldon Johnson had an interview with ESPN San Antonio, um, and that is with hosts. Um, you got Jason Minix and Rob Thompson. And first off, man, those two guys were awesome. What a great interview that was. It was very low key. Um, it was like 30 minutes long. You know, it was very interesting to hear Keldon Johnson's take on a lot of different things regarding basketball himself, learning a little bit more about KJ. This is like the second summer in a row where KJ does a radio interview. Last summer, he, I believe he got to do an interview on um, Rudy Campos and Carolina Teague's sh uh, radio show, uh, The Sports Dime. There you go. There it is, The Sports Dime. So it was Keldon Johnson gave an awesome interview. We're going to talk a little bit about that. And then yesterday on Twitter, um, Jabari Young had a few comments about Kawhi and you know maybe the situation he's in right now maybe means that his return to San Antonio isn't the most outlandish of ideas out there. So we'll talk about those two things here on this show. But before we do that, again, just thank you guys for tuning in. Hit the like button down below. Leave a comment. Say what's up in the chat. If you want to get your um, question answered on screen and talked about by me, again, the link is in the description below. We'll take you to this page right here, and we'll get it answered. Okay, so – First things first, let's talk about the Keldon Johnson interview. Um, again, I, that was with ESPN San Antonio. Uh, this was just an awesome interview. I, I'm, I'm very excited that Keldon Johnson is one of these young guys on our roster that isn't afraid and go out and talking to talk to the media and make appearances. And really, he wants to get involved in the community. He wants to make his name known. He wants to be an actual personality, I feel like, um, someone that, you know, a lot of these, you know, young kids can look up to. And he just wants to, you know, make expand his his brand, right, the Keldon Johnson brand. I think he's doing that fantastically so far in his young career here uh, with San Antonio, first off, right? So um, I'm going to go – I went through the interview, and I just saw it again for the second time uh, – I saw it for the second time just a few moments ago, and I wrote down a lot of my highlights from that interview. And just like the first thing I, 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 at the end of the interview, I just couldn't stop thinking about how awesome these dudes are Jason Minix and Rob Thompson. I, I've never listened to ESPN San Antonio, so this was the first time that I had tuned in to their show. And those two guys are awesome, man. They, they, they knew their stuff. They knew, they knew their stuff about Keldon. They had a lot of, awesome questions lined up and they it wasn't just about this season and and you know like the cliche questions that that Spurs players get asked post game and in the media right a lot of those questions are really generic or they're about the game that just happened right now like so this was this was a little bit more deeper than that I kind of had like a Howard Stern type feel from it I mean not not that they asked you know those type of questions that Howard Stern had but it definitely was like a long forum type interview You can tell that it wasn't scripted. You can tell that Kelvin Johnson was being genuine. He was being honest. Um, the interview was about 30 minutes long. If you want to check out the interview with Kelvin, it's in the link in the description below. Um, so go ahead and check that out. I recommend any Spurs fan go out there and and listen to it to learn a little bit about Kelvin. But also just to, like I said, um, if you haven't listened to ESPN San Antonio and if you're like an iHeartRadio guy or you have some type of access to that, um show i think we should start maybe giving it a listen i think i should start giving it a listen too that's what i'm saying like i just discovered it too and i'm glad i did i'm glad that Keldon got on that show because um opened up that show that door to me as well um so some of the things from from the interview that i found interesting um we'll start up on the questions that they asked Keldon about regarding the season that just happened right so they talked a lot about covid and the protocols and and all of the the, the the COVID testings that they had to do, Keldon mentioned it, there was about five per day. That was that was very interesting to kind of get that backside and that um, context to what an NBA player's life, you know, kind of was like this season. And it's it's interesting because it's the COVID season. You know, there was a lot of um, restriction to a lot of these guys, and you know, like normally these NBA players, they're flying from city to city. They go out, they have a good time. You know, it's, it's even a joke sometimes like 
you know, road teams don't do good in New York or LA because <laughs> they're always out the night before or something like that. Right. So it was, it was just interesting to hear Keldon's point of view on how the Spurs operated and how, you know, they were very safe with all the protocols and they followed all the rules. And, uh, you know, it was a lot of them just kind of being in their hotel rooms most of the time, right. They were traveling and traveling. They get from the plane, the bus to the hotel room, and then just kind of locked down in their hotel room. Keldon said he didn't really mind it though. That was pretty interesting that Keldon Johnson was like just playing video games and, and he's kind of a homebody anyway. So he didn't really mind hanging out in his room. Um, so, you know, that was pretty interesting. But ultimately what Keldon had to say about all of that was that, you know, and, and I think it was not just Keldon, but it was across the board that uh, all the players rather had, had had to do all that. They would rather do all of these testing and have all these protocols and go through all this versus not play, right? And, and I think that's, that's across the board for every NBA player in this league. Um, they had to go through a lot. A lot of hassle, but they'd rather do that over not playing. So that was interesting. First off, um, then they they asked Keldon about about how practice. Uh, this was something that I thought was very interesting in the interview. Was that Keldon? They asked Keldon about practice and how important it was, or what did Keldon think about it? And he hit it right on the head. We talked about it all season. It's just like he Keldon admitted himself that practice would help, would have helped this team. That that's where a lot of the learning gets done. That's where a lot of competition gets done. That's where a lot of you push yourself, you push each other, you know, you, you build bonds and there's all that, you know, that goes into the training camp and the practices that are allotted during a season. And Keldon mentioned that the absence of that made it harder. I think on a lot of like the young guys that there was, you know, that that's where a lot of learning usually does take place. And this season, a lot of the learning had to be done on the fly. Right. And I think that was something that he said, too. And that's that's something that we talked about when it got regarding Keldon, Lonnie uh, or Devin Vassell. You know, some of these young guys that, you know, that were barely kind of, you know, blooming into the system, still learning. You don't you can't learn it all in one season. You're not going to get perfect at Spurs basketball in one season. So these young guys, you know, th this was a real challenge for them. And I think that's something that he that he brought up, though, that was an actual factor this season. Then he also talked about how you know he was proud of his team that they never gave up they fought through it and that was the, that was really good to hear. Um, they talked a lot about um, this is something personal like the personal side of Keldon that I had no idea. I'm pretty sure most of Spurs Nation has no idea um, that Keldon Johnson is actually into like hunting and he's into archery and stuff like that. He said that. He's he's already gone hunting here in South Texas. I mean, if you're if you're here in Texas, you know that there's plenty of hunting uh, going down here. I've gone up to a couple blinds um, around mid Texas to um, North San Antonio and stuff like that to go out there. So it's cool that to hear that from him. That's something I didn't know that he has a couple of uh, a couple of trophies to say that. Um, so that was really cool. Um, he's talking about how he loves San Antonio. It's, it, it has that country feel. He's he's like a country kid. You know, and and that, I think that's why it's such a good fit between him and this city is because we're we we have that in in spades here in San Antonio. Um, something else that they they started diving into with Keldon was they were asking him about his coaches and the coaches that he's had throughout his his career and kind of how that shaped the player that Keldon is today, right? And they talked about Coach Steve Smith from Oak Hill. They talked about Coach Cal. They talked about his AU coaches as well. And, you know, the main common thread, though, that 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 stood out to me from Keldon was he, he said something very interesting. And it's something that a lot of young players need to understand. And 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 understand that it's a good thing. And when Keldon said that all of these coaches pushed him, they pushed him every day and they pushed him to be they were hard on him and um they made him uncomfortable. They made Keldon uncomfortable. They made Keldon comfortable being uncomfortable, you know, knowing that there was always a challenge that the next day was going to be harder and they were just pushing him and pushing him. And if you're a player, if, if you're listening to this and you're like in your twenties or thirties or whatever, and you have some kids growing up and maybe going through little league and stuff like that. Um, you know, once they get to that middle school area, I think that's, you know, from a coaching standpoint, that's kind of where middle school should be about fun and athletics and being active. But once you get to that high school level, um, it really is about 
learning to grow and the growing, you know, parts can only happen when you're uncomfortable and you're being tested and challenged. I think that's something that Keldon kind of was talking about. And that's kind of a common thread from his coaching, from his coaches, from Oak Hill, and then from co to coach Cal in Kentucky um, that, you know, that's why Keldon, he mentioned, Ke Keldon mentioned that that was one of the big reasons why he chose Kentucky is that he knew that they were going to push him and that they were going to turn him into a pro. And that's, that's what he wanted. Right. Um, and they dived into his college recruiting, uh, story. So, I mean, like, I don't want to give too much of it away, but, you know, go check out the interview. Like I said, it's a great interview on ESPN, um, San Antonio, uh, on YouTube. So go check it out on YouTube. Um, he also talked about, you know, c continuing on that, um, topic. He also talked about the fact how Austin and San Antonio were the same way, you know, that they had a lot of support. And the standards from San Antonio are the same standards in Austin. And, you know, that they're going to grind on you. The coaches are going to put you in the film session rooms and they're going to point out all the areas that you need to grow and they're going to be honest and they're going to push you. And, and, you know, while he was in Austin, his rookie season, he still was in very, uh, a lot of communication with San Antonio and the coaches in San Antonio. So, um, you know, he's just been in a class programs since he's been in high school and I'm sure AU as well. Um, and you know, that's just why Keldon, uh, performs, I think on the level that he does. And it's like, we all know Keldon, we all know that Keldon isn't the best, doesn't have all the offensive moves in the world. Uh, but he plays at such a high standard and he has a high expectation that he meets like on a, on a, you know, on a game to game basis, he's pushing himself and he's pushing himself to be the best he can be because that's kind of what he's had to do since the get go. I mean, if you're, if you're in those programs that we just talked about, Oak Hill, uh, Kentucky, you're, you're surrounded by guys that if you don't perform, so, someone else will, you know what I mean? I think Keldon took that to heart and that's kind of what has molded him to be the type of player that he is just great coaching. That's that just goes to, to help to tell you, how important coaching is to the development of these guys. You know what I'm saying? You know, being around the right type of people to push you. And they, they asked him this too. They asked him if, you know, if Keldon likes being around people that are like, yes, men and just agree with him, or does he like around being honest people? And, you know, Keldon mentioned, you know, uh, went on to say that, yeah, that he has a lot of real people around him. That he has a great supporting group around him, his family, his friends that, um, um, shout out to this, uh, is FSM right on Instagram. That's his marketing team. Um, that, you know, those are really good people I think that are helping them like, you know, really grow, uh, in the business side of, uh, of things here in the NBA. And, um, he seems to be a guy that's a good judge of character and he knows what's best for him. And he only puts the people around him that are going to do that. who are going to put Keldon first. So he talked a little bit of how he grew up. That was interesting. His, he has a tight family. Like I said, right now, song, a strong support system. Um, so all that was was very interesting to hear a little bit about his backside. And we all kind of knew some of this, but to hear it come out of him and to hear him talk the way he talked about all of that was was extremely interesting, especially from a coaching standpoint. Um, sorry, you hear little noises. It's my little uh, miniature schnauzer running around. Um, all right, so what else did we have? He had to say something that I didn't know is that um, he started getting recruiting, recruited after his freshman year of high school. And in his freshman year, he said he went up against 11th and 12th graders. So I'm assuming that he was on varsity as a freshman, that he had two 40 point, 40 point games as a freshman, uh, on varsity. Right. So, uh, I mean, it was either varsity or JV, right? I mean, I was pretty sure it was varsity, but that was interesting. You know, so Keldon has been a beast since the get go. Keldon Johnson was a beast in high school as a freshman. As soon as he stepped onto that court, uh, that motor was going right. So, that was very interesting. Talk, like I said, he talked a little bit about the recruiting process that happened with him and going to going to Kentucky. I thought that was pretty cool. Um, then they went in uh, to ask him about what they went to ask him uh, about what he wanted to improve. Actually, I think they asked Twitter and and they uh, the the host uh, the radio host had asked social media on some fan questions and most of them wanted to know, you know, what are the areas games that he's going to, that he wants to improve on and what are the things that he felt that he has already improved on. And Keldon talked about ball handling being one of the big ones, decision-making um, 
and then just working off of his mid-range shot. It was kind of funny that the two guys, uh, they kind of laughed and they were kind of like, no, no more mid-range when Keldon Johnson was like, I want to work on my mid-range shot. Those guys were like, no, man, we've ha we have enough of that. Three ball, man, shoot the three ball. And um, Keldon went into, went, went into, responded with kind of adding that catching and shooting is something that he has gotten better on. And we all, I think we all can agree with that. If you look at Keldon Johnson in the beginning of his rookie season in Austin, man, like his percentages were really low. I'm talking about like 23% or something like that, right? Like, so he was, he was a, he was really rough around the edges, but he has gotten, he has done a great job at just catching, squaring up and knocking it down, right? Keldon is not going to bounce you off the dribble left and right and shoot a three in your face, but we all know Keldon. He might miss three or four threes throughout the game, but in the fourth quarter, the one that matters, he's going to hit that one, right? And that's because Keldon's a gamer, and I've been saying that for a long time. You can check out my film rooms on Keldon Johnson on my channel. I think I have maybe like three or four of them in there. Um, but, yeah, go check those out. So ball handling is something, yeah, that, you know, ball handling, improving Keldon's ball handling is only going to make him more lethal in transition, right? Um and so, so if, if Keldon can add some type of handle to his game, uh, you know, that's going to be ultimately what um, just makes him more deadly in, in the area where he is already very, very good at. So you, you give the ball to Keldon in transition, he's going to take one or two dribbles, bully you to the rim, and score. Uh, what's up to Sean Kelly? Appreciate you, man. Just dropped your tip, 199. Appreciate that, Sean Kelly. Um, let me see if that pops out here on my... There it is right here. So, guys, again, if you want to get your comment or if you just want to drop a tip into the show, I really appreciate that, Sean. Um, you go to that link in the description below or you can use the YouTube Super Chat to get that on. If you have a question or you want to talk Spurs about a certain topic, throw it up here with the tip, and I'll put it up on screen just like this, and then we can go ahead and get on that conversation. Um, so, yeah, so ball handling with Keldon is going to be something that – if he can develop is very, is very interesting. I already kind of think Keldon is a really ahead of his time, um, smart decision maker. Even last year as a rookie, he was making plays, smart plays, not bulldozing through people, understanding when the charge is waiting for him. And he's able to, to rise up and pass out and make the right pass. He rarely turns it over. Um, Keldon doesn't put himself in bad situations. I think that's something that, that he's learned again through his, through his playing days is that, he recognizes bad situations and knows when it's time to kind of pull out. My dog's over here kicking around a balloon and stuff. I got to keep him in the room with me because the baby's out there. Anyways, so, um, all right, let's keep going here. Uh, something else that he talked about that uh, that uh, was his off-season routine. He's talking about, like, last season and this season are very similar, his off-seasons, and – in, in regards to like his preparation, he's, he's doing, he mentioned that he's been doing like three days that he's been doing like workout and training, strength training in the mornings. And then, you know, he'll go to the gym in the afternoon and maybe again at night. Right. So Keldon's one of these guys, man, he's, he's a workhorse. That's why it's kind of, uh, it's reassuring. It's kind of like, you can, you can rest your mind that Keldon is not just going to be a one hit wonder. He's not going to be the type of guy that, um, comes into the league with a certain skill set and never really develops it and fizzles out. That's not going to be Kelton because he's putting in that work. Um, and so that was very interesting to hear that he's been grinding, that he's not – they started off the show asking him, like, hey, man, you're like, you're not going on a vacation? He's like, nah, I'm staying around San Antonio, getting in the gym, um, just hanging out, you know, interacting with the community, and I thought that was pretty awesome. Um, he mentioned something that I thought was pretty awesome, which was about opp opportunity and – how he trains his tail off and he never knows when the opportunity is going to come, but he knows that he has to be ready for it. That's another thing. Like if you got kids or, or, or if you're, if you're a player or, or uh, that's something you have to train the mindset to, to be like, you know, a lot of these parents, like I were, you know, they tell their kid, you're the best, you're the greatest, you know, you, he's not better than you or she's not better than you. And you should be playing over him. You shouldn't. And that's just like the wrong way to approach a player's mentality uh, and the development of young kids and, and, and players. Keldon has like the, the perfect words to explain it right here. And he just said, you know, he's, he doesn't know when that opportunity has come, but he's going to make sure that he's ready for it. And he's going to work his tail off in, you know, day in and day out 
so he can be ready for that opportunity. He's not going to let it pass because Keldon hasn't been a guy, like I said, he's not like this, you know, 20 point bucket type of player, you know, especially like in college and stuff like that, like college and at the pros, maybe in high school, but, um, you know, he had to earn his minutes by, and I, and that's why I have a film room on him called 50, 50, right? Because Keldon does all the other things that hardly anyone does. He's the one sacrificing his body. He's the one that's getting after it, trying to create opportunities out of nothing. And, you know, so that's, that just kind of goes to show his, his mind, his mindset and his mentality. And that's something that, you know, everyone should have. And not just like in basketball, like that's just in life. That's a life lesson um, in your job or in your work or whatever you're working hard and, and, and you just got to keep grinding, keep getting better at what you do. And when opportunity comes, you just got to be ready for that opportunity. That was great advice from Keldon to anyone that was listening again, go watch the show. The, the interview is in the description below. Um, and then he ended up just kind of saying that he should, he wants to fine tune everything to his game. Right. And then maybe add a few things. And that's, that's the process. You know, that's, that's the way to go about it. You can't add, you know, four or five different things to your game in an off season. You'll net you like, you won't be able to implement any of them. So that's smart. Um, probably coming from like the veterans on how to approach, you know, getting better on the off season. That's like, get better at one thing. It's like, you're gonna have a long career. Like you need to, you need to be adding like at least one or two things every single off season. So Keldon seems to have that mindset to get better at what he's already good at and to add a few things here and there. Um, he mentioned that he learned about tacos really quick <laughs> when he got to San Antonio. So I thought that was pretty funny. Um, they asked him if he's watching the playoffs and he said that he is, he said that he's watching every single playoff game. And uh, he said that actually him and all the young guys are watching and it's making them all hungry to get in. You know, I, he's talking Devin, I mean, he didn't, he didn't mention anyone's name, but you would think he's talking about, you know, like DeJounte, Devin, um, uh, DeJounte, Devin Vassell, Derek White, Lonnie Walker, those guys. I'm pretty sure all those guys that haven't really been able to get there, they want to get in and they're taking it personally and uh, they're watching. So they're, he mentioned that he's watching and learning. He just wants to see what playoff basketball is all about. So uh, they asked him about tanking and what his thoughts are about tanking. And it just kind of also goes, this is another quote, just another quote that goes to show a lot of Keldon Johnson's character. Um, uh, and they asked him about tanking. He was like, why, why would you play to lose every time he's out there that he's competing to win, not to lose? And that's just, I think, across the board. Uh, the players aren't out there to tank, but the coaches put the worst players on the court and that's how, or on their roster, and that's how they tank. Right? So they raise, they lower the bar of how good they can be. Um, but the player is always going out there to prove something um, work his tail off. And he kind of said that tanking is like disrespecting the game. Like if you're out there and you're just half assing it, excuse me, you're just half, you know, um, you're not putting in the full effort out there. That's disrespecting the game. And that's that I, I like that quote too, from him. Uh, they asked him, which one does he want more, uh, winning or not losing? He said, not losing that. I like that one too. That was a good question. Um, to kind of close off, I and mean, there's a lot more to this interview that I think, you know, all you guys should go out and check the link is in the description below. Again, that's, uh, Keldon Johnson's interview with ESPN San Antonio's, um, Jason Minix and Rob Thompson. Um, I had to, I, it ended with this and it was, it was probably, this was probably the best freaking thing that I've heard in a long time regarding San Antonio, Rob Thompson, shout out Rob Thompson, the host, Rob Thompson. Um, he was, he told Keldon right before he left, he says, as a city, I had to type it. I had to type it down because it was awesome. As a city, we have come accustomed to greatness. We know what it looks like when we see it. We know, and we know that Keldon's going to have a good run. It's going to be a good run for Keldon. And I just thought that was awesome because that's kind of how I carry myself when it comes to um, basketball and, and my vision and my size, especially in the NBA level. It's like the NBA level. We know what greatness is. We know what championship level basketball is because we've seen it for 20 freaking years, right? Like we, we are so lucky. We're so spoiled. Like shout out Tim Duncan hall of fame, right? Like we're, we're the, the other big three they're, they're coming. Um, but be, it's because of those guys and coach pop, right? Don't forget coach pop. 
uh, or behind that 20 year run that actually let us as a fan base understand and see what greatness looks like and what it takes. And we just, we've seen it day in and day out. And I think we can all agree with Rob Thompson here um, that Keldon has a lot of that in him. He has a lot of that in him. So um, that's kind of my review on the, uh, on that interview again, links down there in the description below. Great interview. It's about 30 minutes long. So if, if you want to like get on a bike or whatever, um, to get on a bike, you know, or, or go do some cardio or whatever it is, take a long shower or whatever it is, but go, definitely go and check out that interview. It gives you a lot of insight to Keldon Johnson. Again, it was like very unscripted, laid back, long forum. Keldon had like, you could tell a lot, a lot of that was just very genuine from Keldon Johnson. So shout, shout out to Keldon for, you know, starting that hopefully new trend where Spurs players don't mind talking to the media and getting out there. Um, so guys, if you're watching right now, please hit that like button down below. Smash that like button if you're enjoying this episode. If you want to get your question or comment or tip like Sean Kelly's just tipped us really quick. Thank you, Tom. Uh, thank you, Sean. Um, yeah, Rob Thompson used to do the radio. Yeah, well, well, uh, he's on ESPN San Antonio now, so I don't know what he did before that. But um, thank you, Sean, again for this tip, guys. If you want to drop yours, you can do that. It'll take if you go to the link in the description below, streamelements.com backslash a Bucking Spurs Pod backslash tip. It uses PayPal and it links up your PayPal. You can drop your tip. Everything goes to support this channel and the pamper fund for my little guy. All right, so that was the interview. Again, if you want to find them on Instagram, they're uh, at ESPN underscore S-A. Um, the next thing that I want to talk about on this show, right, that was on the thumbnail, is the other day, or it was yesterday, I guess, um, Jabari Young on Twitter. I'm going to go ahead and read through some of these tweets, and, and they got me thinking. It got a lot of Spurs Nation. There was a lot of comments. A lot of people had a lot to say about this, and – Let's go ahead and just read through some of Jabari Young at Jabari Young's uh, tweets here. He goes, just in my opinion regarding Kawhi Leonard, right? Just in my opinion, but really feel Spurs could be low key lurking. I mean, why not see if they can get him back? Could be a long shot, but closed mouths don't get fed, right? Take a shot and ask for a meeting. If he declines 36 million, that's it. And then uh, the Reddit at Reddit Spurs uh, responded and says his goals, his goal, meaning Kawhi's goal was to get to the West Coast and he's there. Sure, Pop would love to have him back, but I can see why he wouldn't want to go back. And then Jabari responds with goals change. I know he's also he also wants to win. Not sure that that's happening right now, at least a championship level at a championship level with the Clippers. And I'm not sure what it means, but his mom still lives in San Antonio, and that can't be a bad thing, can it? Again, just me. That was Jabari Young on Twitter. If you want to go check it out, go ahead and check it out. So, I mean, that goes, that just raises the question. You know, would you want Kawhi Leonard back in San Antonio? It's an interesting question. It's, I don't think it's as easy answered as we all think. I think. First reaction is, no, let him go. He he did us dirty. He's where he wanted to go. He left us. He won a championship with uh, with Toronto, and now he's where he wanted to be. Why would we want you know? Wh why would we want to take him back? So I went to Twitter. I went to my Instagram, guys. If you're not following me on Instagram at Spurs Film Room, you're missing out on a lot of like just cool stuff with my Instagram stories. I had a poll up there. Um, I had a poll up there. Would you take Kawhi back? And right now it's, it's 67% yes. And 33% no from Spurs nation on my, on Instagram. Right. And I'll tell you, I'll tell you my, my point on it right now. Um, my take on it. And, you know, if, if you think, if you entertain the idea of Kawhi Leonard back in San Antonio, it's it sounds intriguing, right? Like he provides a lot of the offensive whatever that we don't have now. Um, you think about the defensive lineups with him along with all of our young guys and how good defensively we could be. Um, you start thinking about all that good stuff, right? 
So you're either on one side or the other. You're either like, no, we don't want him back. He did us dirty. Or you start entertaining the idea and thinking like, oh, okay, this is what it would look like, right? Now, <laughs> I'm going to take you back to, I can't remember the year, but it's the year that, uh, it was 20, I want to say 2016, 2017, somewhere around there. I was very like 100% sure walking through life, <laughs> knowing two things were never going to happen. I always thought that one, LeBron James would never go back to Cleveland. That was something that I was like so sure about in my life was that LeBron James, after he had left and went to Miami. Oh, okay. Well, let's go back. It wasn't, it, it was uh 2015, right? Um, after the Spurs had just whooped him and whooped the heat in the 2014 finals, the Spurs took home that championship. Um, something happened that next summer. And it was something that I had for, like, I would, I, that whole off season, it was out there in the media. And I was just like, no, it will never happen. Cause they ended on such bad terms, right? LeBron James left Cleveland. The owner called him out on like an email written in like cosmic sands or whatever it is like that fifth grader style of type on Microsoft word or whatever. He just put out a letter on the internet, just, just trashing LeBron. And I thought, man, after that, how could you go back and work for that guy? And I, I, you know, talking about, I think it was, is Dan Gilbert, right? Is Dan, you can let me know. Uh, Dan Gilbert was, I think that's his name was the, the owner GM, whatever the owner of the team. So when the owner comes out and then just starts trash talking you, all over the internet, I never thought that Kawhi, I mean, that LeBron James would go back after that. I thought he would take his talents to Miami and then after Miami, maybe somewhere else, right? I never thought there was ever going to be a flight back to Cleveland from LeBron James after that, after the way it ended. But that was what that was the one thing that I was so sure about, and then it happened. And right around the same time, this is kind of off top, this is off basketball, but right around the same time, I was so sure that Spider-Man was never going to be in a Marvel Cinematic Universe movie. Like, so sure. I was just like 100. I remember people would always ask, oh, we got to get Spider-Man in there. We got to get Spider-Man in the movie. And I know this is kind of for the nerds, right? Spider-Man got to get in a Marvel movie. And and anyone who knows any like anything about how cinema works, Spider-Man was... Uh, is is owned not was is owned by sony pictures right by sony by sony's uh entertainment brand right and that's why that's 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 been for forever in the for the movie rights and so there really wasn't a possibility for him to get into the marvel cinematic universe because disney owns the mcu right so there's disney and there's sony and they're two different properties and there was i i just never ever thought there was a way that Sony was going to be like, okay, yeah, you can, I, I never thought they were ever going to be able to come to an agreement or a deal to share Spider-Man's movie rights. And then, and then LeBron James goes back to Cleveland one. And I just couldn't freaking believe it, man. I remember I was driving through New Braunfels, um, going up to see my mom, shout out to New Braunfels. If we got anyone here from, from San Antonio, y'all know what I'm talking about. Beautiful, beautiful New Braunfels. I'm looking actually to, to move up there in the next few years. New Braunfels are, uh, or, uh, you know, like the Cibolo uh, area, you know, that North 1604 area. Um, I lived in San Antonio for, for like seven years. I don't, I don't live there uh, right now, but the goal with me and my wife and our family is always to get back to San Antonio. And that's kind of where we're looking for a little bit North 1604, somewhere around New Braunfels, San Marcos, uh, shoot, anywhere in there between. I can go catch an Austin game and catch San Antonio game, right? Um, <laughs> New Braunfels. Um, yeah, so... So I was driving up through New Braunfels and I got the, the freaking uh, announcement from LeBron that LeBron's like, I'm coming home. I was like, what? <laughs> what? Like, oh my God. I was like, that just blew my mind. Um, and then shortly after that, I believe Spider-Man and, and, and Sony and Marvel had come to an agreement. Spider-Man was going to end up being in 
in Captain America Civil War, right? So that's kind of how that played out. If you guys, I don't know, if you guys are with me, I'm sorry, man. I went on a whole like movie tangent. I know that's not what we're talking about here, but those are two things, man. Like I remember at the same time, I never thought would happen. And that is when I learned to never be so sure about things that cannot happen, right? So that's kind of where I learned my lesson there. Um, and so... <laughs> um sony has spider-man at some point you guys you guys are hilarious man in the chat i'm checking you guys out right now um yeah so you know that those were so when it comes back to the question of can Kawhi ever come back to san antonio i'm not gonna roll it out right i'm not gonna roll out the possibility right now if you're watching that dallas clipper series and and the Clippers are about it ha, have there's a possibility that the Clippers get swept, right? Dallas just went into into LA and stole the first two games from from the Clippers and it's not even like close. There's only so like like I'm sorry, but Kawhi needs, you know, a better point guard than Pat Beverly. Pat, Pat Beverly is fine. He's 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 a he's a feisty point guard that you want on your team. Um, but he's definitely not a starting caliber point guard in the playoffs. That's just my opinion here in Pat Beverly. So, so I think that Kawhi and with that team, the way it is, and, and it's just never going to be that good. And I, I, th you know, you know, there was a report about Kawhi wanting Paul George to come to the Spurs when he was with the Spurs and, the, and the Spurs were like, mm, nah, I think we'll pass. And a lot of Spurs nation were like, what? Like we had that, like like that, it could have been a thing here in San Antonio. Why do we pass on that? Well, I think we're seeing it right now for the past two years. Why I think the Spurs are actually the smarter ones in this in this uh, <laughs> in this scenario because it's not working. I don't think you can have Kawhi and Paul George, two guys that played the same position, be successful on the same team. It just it's just the basketball has a formula to it, man. Like basketball. Has to has to be there has to be a balance on the floor. You can't have even they're both great players, but they're just they're proving to the world that they can't compete at a high level together. But Paul George has shown that hey man, when it's all on his back, he can do it. Kawhi has shown that hey man, when it's all on his back, he can do it. Or when he's with the Spurs, right? So, so I don't think that the situation in Clipperland is all that great on the court. And then you look at the rest of their team, and it's just like, who who do they have? Nicholas Batum? Like, are you are you kidding me? Nicholas Batum is like an actual important player. It's actually he actually matters to the Los Angeles Clippers being successful. Like that just should like you know how us in San Antonio we're like, look, Rudy Gay is like our second or third best player game to game, and it's like, yeah, we can like that's true, but that also kind of just goes to show you what kind of level we're at. Right when Rudy Gay is your like one of your main guys, probably not that good, right? And as you know, so that's kind of where I'm at. It's like if Nicholas Batum has to be that good in order for you to win, or their big guy who I love too. Like don't don't get me wrong, Nicholas Batum, Frenchman, Tony Parker, shout out Tony Parker. I think is going to go play in the uh, in the World Series of Poker this year, so that should be interesting. Um, you know, so shout out Nicholas Batum. That's fine, um, but. You know, and then uh, is it Zubach? Zubach with the Clippers too? Like, um, like, like it's just not. They don't. They don't have the supporting cast, man, to get it done. Rajon Rondo's there, but Rajon Rondo, you know, he's only going to be as good as he can make his team. And that team just, I don't. On paper, I don't even think they're that good. Like you have Kawhi and Paul George, and supposedly that's all that should matter. But it's, it's just, it's not. It's not enough. They need a better point guard right now. Luka Doncic is just killing everybody, right? So, if I'm Kawhi, I'm like, okay, this can either go two ways this off season. I can either stay in Clipperland, and that's where I wanted to be, and I want to be here in LA, and no matter what, I'm never going to leave if under you know his control. Um, so either he sticks it out and tries to you know another off season of you know shuffling his teammates around him. Maybe they do think about moving Paul George for for someone else. Uh, you know, there's there's different ways they can play out, or he gets out of there. See, but I don't think he's gonna get out of there. If you were Kawhi and you finally got everything you wanted, he's in he's in commercials now. He's like the main guy. He's like the face of the franchise. 
you know, a lot of what the Spurs culture and organization kind of um, looks looks the other way on. Like, we don't like our players to, you know, we don't blow up our players like that. Like, oh, we have this one or two main guys and we put their poster everywhere and, and they're just, you know, like they're just, we just blow them up. We don't do that. We do things by committee. We're a team, very team organization here. And so Kawhi finally got what he wanted over there. Like he's getting all this stuff and he's home, all that stuff. So not only that, but he gets all of his reported preferential treatment. He gets to show up whenever he wants. He gets to call. I mean, I, I saw the other day who, who interviewed Nick Nurse. I think it was Ryan Rossillo on the ringer interviewed the Toronto coach from Nick Nurse. And he's like, hey, man, what is one of the things that you learned from Kawhi this uh, from coaching him in that one year in Toronto, he was just like, I learned that you have to just let Kawhi be Kawhi in terms of like, th there was a lot of times where Nick nurse wanted to sub Kawhi in, but Kawhi would be, would be like, nah, I need like another two minutes. And, and you know, there was that kind of tug and pull from a co the coach and him to kind of like, you know, the coach didn't even have control over when he sat and when he checks in, that that's something that kind of that Kawhi has control over. And he went on to say, the coach said, went on to say that Kawhi knew his body better than anyone else. And so he was right that Kawhi would come in whenever he wanted to come in and give us the effort, give us everything we, they needed or whatever. But like, he's not going to have that in San Antonio. He's not going to look at Pop and be like, no, Pop, I'm not ready to go in. Give me two minutes. You think Pop's going to be able to be, to be like, oh, okay, what? No, man, that's not how we do things here in San Antonio. Or if it's Becky Hammond or if it's Will Hardy or if it's anyone else, Kawhi is not going to come into San Antonio and call the shots. And he has all the right to call the shots in the Clipper land, right? So when it comes to that, when I start thinking about it like that, I don't see why Kawhi would want, want to come back to San Antonio. Um, now, that's everything off the floor. On the floor... It, it's very interesting. It's I, I mean, if I'm Kawhi I, I, and if I am looking to leave um, Clipperland and I'm thinking about going back to San Antonio and, at, and I ask myself, do I have a better chance to win in San Antonio with those group of guys than the guys here? It's like, hell yeah. It's like, hell yeah, bro. It's like we got a, DeJounte Murray is, is busting through his ceiling. Um, we have Keldon Johnson, Devin Vassell, Luka Samanich is going to be – look, guys, I, I'll, we'll talk about Luka and our draft, and we'll talk a lot about stuff as we go on in the show. But, you know, Luka, I think it's 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 going to be his time uh, next season. So he's going to be very important. Um, but I think our supporting cast and the players that we have under contract, definitely – if you if you plug Kawhi onto this team, I think they're they're at least, you know – I, I think they're better than, you know, whatever he's got over there in, in uh, with the Clippers right now. So, um, but do I want to back now? Now let's talk about that. All that being said, I don't think he would want to come over here. X, Y, and Z reasons why. Um, but would it make sense on the floor? It's like, hell yeah, it would. Would it make sense anywhere else? I'm not sure. Um, now what I want him back, I'll take him back. I'll take him back. And when, when he scores his first buck in San Antonio, everyone's going to be like, all right, okay, let's give him like, let's, let, let, let's, let's gradually accept him back. Let's give him a couple of applauses um, here and there. But eventually, just like LeBron did back in Cleveland, bro, if Cleveland can take back LeBron the way that they did, San Antonio, I think, you know, we got a good head on our shoulders. We would accept Kawhi back. Um and then try to move forward at that point on, especially if we're championship contending and stuff like that. I think I think it's a good look. So I actually, actually, um, yeah, thanks, Sean. Appreciate you stopping by, man. Um, yeah, so I actually don't mind the idea of Kawhi coming back to San Antonio, and if he doesn't, I really don't care. Like I, I, I like where we're at right now. I like our group of guys right now. Um, we're in this, I think we have the second most cap space, um, in the league this summer, uh, to spend. Right. So we have like, I think something like 46 million to spend, which is crazy guys. It's like, man, dude, this off season is going to be so awesome for, for the Spurs, man. Cause we got a huge, we're in a, in a brand new situation with this cap space and stuff. We can actually, I mean, what do we do with it? I don't know. 
will we make a move? Will we sit on our tails and just kind of keep our money where it is, pay some vets on a two-year contract, um, extend our young guys? Who knows? Or will we go out and try to get um, some guys? I know a lot of Spurs Nation on Instagram, they talk about Lloyd uh, on my, my Instagram. Make sure to follow me at Spurs Film Room on Instagram. Um, you know, they want Laurie Markinen. They want John Collins. We're seeing John Collins right now play with Atlanta. So if you want to know a little bit about John Collins, that's going to be a free agent this summer that um, a lot of Spurs Nation wants. Um, go look at that Atlanta series. Check out John Collins. Um, Laurie Markinen's interesting too. Um, so we have a lot of guys on contract that are young and that have you know all the room in front of us. The the rook, the vets are coming off the books. All right. So anyway, so we have the free agency situation, the salary, the the, the amount of cap space we have situation, and we're we're gonna have the eleventh, the twelfth pick. I think we lost the coin flip. So we're gonna have the twelfth pick in the NBA draft, and this NBA draft is. It has been talked about being like two or three times better than last year's NBA draft. Talking about the quality of players in the draft, right? So we have the draft in front of us, and that should be very interesting. We should get a good pick at number 12. Um, you know, so it's just, and then we have, we're going to have a summer league. We're going to have an NBA summer league. I think it's the first or second week of August. That the summer league is going to be in Vegas, man. Whew, man, I wish I could go. I've been to the summer league before, um, to well, the summer before COVID, so 2019 it was awesome. That's what that's where that's from. If you don't believe me, MGM Resorts Summer League. Um, but yeah, no. So it's going to be a, a fun off season. Very interesting. Very pivotal for the Spurs. Now Kawhi coming back to the Spurs in this off season would just make it even more crazy. Um, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't, uh, be mad at it. He left, he did his thing. He did what he wanted to do. And if he's like, Hey man, I want to go back, you know, the, he wants some of that structure back or wants to be around that, this type of environment again, this very team first environment, not player first environment that we're here. We're very much about, I mean, we're about our players, but our players are, that, that's the difference. We're about our players in this organization, but we have players that are about the team that put the team first and just kind of go. I mean, again, go listen to that Keldon Johnson interview on ESPN San Antonio. Um, you know, they, they had, they did a great job and Keldon Johnson just kind of goes to show you that character as well. He, you know, he's one of those guys. Um, so guys, again, if you want to get your question, like I say right now at the end of the show, I like to save some time to pull your questions out of a hat right? Um, you have some comments, something that you want me to talk about for a few minutes, you know, we can talk about it here and I'll be putting them on screen just like Sean Kelly's tip here. He dropped it in the YouTube super chat. So appreciate that, Sean. There's a link in the description below. If you have a, a PayPal account, it'll link it right up um, to, you'll take you to this page right here. You can drop a tip and then attach your question along with that tip. And we can talk about it here on the show live on the show live. That's kind of where um, I want the show to go, right? So I'm, I'm trying to do more content for you guys. I want to take more questions from y'all uh, at the end of the show um, or actually like during the show too, you know, like I'll, if we're talking about something, you drop a tip, um, you know, we'll talk about it. I want this to be more of an interactive type of forum here where it's, it's very much um, me engaging with y'all, um, you guys dropping your tips and supporting the channel and everything that, like that just kind of encourages me to to keep doing what I'm doing here and, and keep trying to provide as much content from y'all. I'm trying to get on now daily, um, Monday through Friday. I'm still working around with the time slots. Like yesterday was at four. Today was, today was at um, five. Uh, tomorrow I might even try later, maybe around six or seven tomorrow. Um, and then next week I'm, I'm going to be experimenting maybe with some AM, some AM, uh, time slots, right? So, uh, just kind of depends on, you know, how long it takes me to get the thumbnail ready and to get the show notes ready and do all that stuff, but definitely want to talk Spurs basketball. So have a lot of things planned. We'll be talking about individual players. We'll be talking about possibly, you know, uh, the NBA draft and, you know, we're going to talk a lot about stuff and I'm, you know, trying to pace it today was a long show. It was 54 minutes long. Um, trying to keep it here under an hour, but I definitely want to squeeze in time to take your questions 
and um, take your super chats and your tips and all that stuff. So that's very important to the success of the show. So, you know, whenever you guys can, right, it's not a mandatory thing, but whenever you guys can and you're doing well in your situation, wherever you're at, drop a tip down there. Um, I really appreciate it over here uh, on my end, as well as um, if you, and, and here's another another way that you can get your questions and stuff on the show for free, right? This is without, you know, like the tips live is every once in a while on my Instagram, I will post questions or like I'll, I'll put a, a question box in one of my stories where, where I'll ask you guys, Hey man, you got any questions for the show today or any comments for the show today? And you guys can drop them there on the Instagram. So if you're not on Instagram, maybe get on. If you're on Instagram, definitely follow me at Spurs Film Room. Um, and guys, this link over here uh, in the description. Oh, let me take this off the screen. Um, the link in the description, guys, is open 24-7. This www.streamelements.com backslash a bucking Spurs podcast backslash tip, right? So if you are... Um, watching this show post live and you want to get your question on, you can always do that. If you're at, if it's two in the morning and you can't stop thinking about, you know, something Spurs related and you want to drop that tip in there and drop that question there to be talked about on our next show here on this channel, go ahead and do that. Um, yeah. So that all that being said, guys, countdown city, San Antonio, what's up? Um, rowdy, Birds up, Rowdy Nation. What's going on? UTSA. Shout out to my alma mater. Um, it's been a lot of fun. To, to If you follow me on my Instagram, I will also kind of keep you updated on what the show, the next show will be about once I know, right? Once I make the topics and stuff like that, see what the, what the buzz is around Spurs Nation, I will uh, usually post on Instagram. And uh, that's where you can kind of be in the know with what's going on here at Spurs film room. And if you are someone who doesn't have the opportunity to sit in front of a video screen, you know, and watch the show, um, that often, um, you can always listen to the podcast, right? This is also a Spurs film room podcast on Apple podcast, Spotify, and more again, follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, uh, definitely subscribe. If you're hanging out here, please smash that like button. If you've enjoyed this episode, if you've taken anything out of this, you enjoyed it, smash that like button, chant Go Spurs Go whenever you do, put a comment down wherever you're watching this, rate it if you're listening to it. Appreciate all the love, guys. Going to be trying to do a lot more here for y'all. Um, shout out to my my newborn son, RT3, and uh, that's Rob Trejo the third. Shout out to him. Shout out to my pops. Shout out to, to everybody out there. All right, guys, so awesome. Great hanging out with you guys. This is where I'm going to call it. Go Spurs go. And I'll see you guys tomorrow. Again, probably around, I'm thinking I'm thinking six or seven. I'm experimenting with these time slots. Yesterday was four. Today was five. Got a little bit more of you guys on today. Um, let's see what happens tomorrow. Probably around six or seven. So stay tuned. Go Spurs go. Um, I'm going to be playing a couple trailers from my channel. So right here, before I hang up this call right here with you guys, you guys can check out a couple of trailers that I have on my channel. So if you haven't subscribed or if you're watching on Facebook or whatever, um, go check out my YouTube channel and you can see more Spurs content. All right. So go Spurs go. Catch you on the next one. I mean, I got drafted for a reason. If I wasn't any good, then they, I wouldn't have got drafted. I mean, at the same time, I know I'm a rookie. I think I've been enjoying it, I've been learning. Something new every day, so. I mean, that's just the main thing that I keep learning and growing. It's time to focus and get better. Learn something each and every day. Just keep growing each and every day. Yeah. I think I need to work on everything in my whole entire game. Defense, offense. Yeah, defense. I mean, that's, yeah. the, that's the big key for the Spurs, defense. I mean, I play hard. I give everything I got. 
I'm gonna leave it all out there. This is me. Keep bringing energy, keep being myself, and I'll be fine. Everything starts to be fine.